overview of issue management. Issues are something that gets encountered and lodged by all the team members, including the project managers, as a part of day-to-day -day project management. And it's always a good idea to maintain a separate issues register. Now, while I used to work in Oracle implementations, we used to manage a separate issue register in an Excel sheet. But maintaining it in an Excel sheet is a challenge in itself because someone has to take the accountability in terms of managing it and then following up with the team members, updating the status, and then sending it to the client, the updated status, once the issue has been resolved. And the second challenge was to maintain a, the versions of each of the issue register. For example, if the issue register gets updated every week, then the challenge was to maintain the version in terms of the updates that has been made on this week and the following week and then so on. So all that was like more or less a manual management of the Excel sheet issue management. Oracle project management brings a functionality that cuts down this challenge of maintaining issues in an Excel sheet. You can maintain the issues online in Oracle project management against a predefined project and task. So before we go into the functionalities of issue management, let's understand what's an issue. An issue is a concern, problem, or sending question on a project or a task. And issue management is the process of recording those issues, tracking and resolving issues. This process often requires a collection of input from various people associated with the project and other interested parties. For example, if the client has logged in an issue that he is facing some problems in Oracle applications while doing a functional testing and he raises an issue, so project manager logs in into the issue register and he then assigns it to the individual functional owner who will investigate the issue, resolve the issue and place it back to the client. So that's like an issue cycle until a issue gets resolved and accepted. Oracle project provides you with a centralized issue management system that enables you to manage the process and communicate issues in a consistent and timely manner. So where is that centralized system? Let's go back to Oracle project very quickly. And when you open the project dashboard, if you go on to the control within this workbench, you will see a place wherein you can raise the issues. Also create change requests or change orders. So in this context, let's talk about the issues. The change requests and change orders are something I've covered in the next module. So that's the place you can create new issues. You can predefine issue categories and as a project manager, you can come over here and create a new issue or as a team member, as long as the team member has got an authority given in his responsibility to create the issues, he can as well create those issues. So you can hit the create button. It will open a form wherein you provide the details about the issue. And then based on your authority, you may or may not assign it to another person. So these are the details that you provide in the header. Then you also provide the issue status if you are the person who is handling the issue. And if at all you are able to successfully resolve the issue, then you can also update the status and a summary of the resolution. Now let's go back and understand a couple of other functionalities of issue management. So issue management offers many features such as the ability to use a predefined set of issue types, which is something I've shown you a little while ago. Define statuses for issues according to the need of your organization. So whether issue is open or in progress or it has been under testing or it is closed. So those are the statuses one can define. Create issues and assign actions. Obviously you can create the issues, but the most important part is assigning actions to those issues. So actions could be, for example, reviewing the issue or if you have assigned it to someone to look into that issue and that person has investigated and resolved it then you pass it on to a testing team to test that resolution so that's like an action you're making and that's something you can do it as a part of your 
issue management. So let's go back to Oracle and I'm going to show you how you can do it. So let's open this issue which has been already defined. And here you can see you can specify the issue status and you can classify the kind of issue it is. You can also give the priority level of effort required in this issue. The important part is you can create an action. And as I said, you can create an action. It could be any action, but here the predefined ones are a review or an update action. And then after you create an action, you can also assign it to a person within your organization to look into that action. And that person can own this action and then provide his comment in terms of resolving that action. You can also specify whether a sign off is required for that action once it has been completed. And you can also provide your comments in relation to those actions. Now let's go back to our presentation. The next one is associate related documents with an issue. So in other words, you can attach documents to an issue. Those documents could be simply word documents or you can give a reference to other issues within your projects or you can issue or you can attach reference to documents which are under your document repository. Something like Oracle Content Management if you are installed and you've integrated with Oracle projects, then you can link it to that content repository. You can enable team members to create and manage issues. So that's more of giving the responsibility or function to create and manage issues. One can search for issues across the projects. So as you can see in this issue dashboard, if you go back to issues and here one can do a search. You can either search by the views which are predefined over here, which is like more or less like a simple search, but you can go to advanced search and here Oracle provides multiple parameters through which you can make a search. Plus you can add more search criteria over here by using this functionality. Okay, so using any of the fields which are used in the issues, which could be within one project or it could be across the projects. All right. Then the next functionality you have is copy existing issues to expedite the creation of new issues. So issues which are already created, you can simply use them to recreate a new issues with a couple of clicks, which will save you the time to create new issues. And then you can update whatever information that you would like to update and associate it with the newly created issues. You can also export a list of issues into Microsoft Excel spreadsheet to perform further analysis or reporting. So if you go back to this issue workbench here, you will have a place to export the issues. So if you come out of this advanced search and here you can see, you can select the issues. Let's say select all and you can export it to a Microsoft Excel state away from here. As simple as that. Then you can automatically route issue notifications using Oracle workflow. So this is a standard functionality. When you assign a issue to one of your team members, you want him to be notified automatically on his email box, like an Outlook email. So for that, Oracle provides the functionality of workflows behind issue management. So as soon as you assign an issue to someone based on the schedule of the background Oracle workflow, that person will be notified. For example, if the background workflow is scheduled to run for every 15 minutes, then the moment you assign the issue to someone and after the Oracle workflow background process runs, that person would be notified automatically via email, which will be spawned from the background issue management workflow that is running. Not only the assignment, but also you can send notification when there is an update to an issue or when an issue gets closed. You certainly would like to get notified as soon as those actions happens. And all that can be controlled using the workflow background process for issue management. Change the owner of single issue or multiple issues at the same time. So you can do an update 
to a single issue by opening the issue itself and changing the ownership or you have got a mass update functionality wherein you can select multiple issues and then change the owner. Lastly, you can track the ownership and status history of issues and view the history of assignment, which is extremely important. You certainly want some form of an audit as to what's going on in terms of updates to the issue that has been raised, whom it has been assigned, what action he has taken, and then after taking the action, he has forwarded to someone for further testing and review. So who is doing that, where the issue is presently lying, and after the issue has been closed, you would like to do an audit as to how much of time it has taken from creation of issue to closing the issue and do further analysis for taking further corrective action as far as your management of the project is concerned. So that's issue management. The issue actions management I have already explained to you, but let's quickly read what's written over here. Issues can detract attention and resources from project completion. Therefore, you want to resolve and close issues quickly. To achieve this goal, you can create and assign actions on issues to project team members or others enabling all participants of an issue to collaborate and share information. This centralized system enables you to track comments and actions performed by action assignees, providing you all the interested parties visibilities of the entire issue resolution process. So if you go back, you can see the details of issue and the associated actions in an issue itself. You've got to open it in update mode to understand what's going on in terms of the actions. Now in this particular issue, I believe there are no actions at all, but had you created an action, then you could have tracked it in terms of what has happened so far, whether it has been signed off or how many days it has been updated since, what's the action taken and so on. You can also see the interaction history, which is what I was explaining you in terms of the history of an issue as to what has happened so far. So when it was created, when it was updated, when a comment was added and so on, which is extremely important. I also explained you about the feature of attachments in issues, which is where you attach the documents or you can also use this place to refer to a external repository in Oracle Content Management as long as you have installed the plugins that link with that external repository. You can also use this place to refer to URLs within your organization as a reference. So that's all is in terms of the overview of issue management. Now, as we go along in this module, I'm going to take each one of these topics and I'm going to explain you more about that using a realistic business scenario.